Good afternoon.
Premier, every day Ontario's police officers put their lives on the line to protect us and our families. The COVID-19 emergency and recovery continue to be a reminder of how much we value our frontline workers and why we need to support their mental health and well-being in every way we can. The new hiring initiative we are announcing today is part of the continued steps our government is taking to improve the OPP's workplace culture and support OPP personnel as they go above and beyond to serve in our communities. This important recruitment of 200 additional officers responds to one of the key recommendations of the OPP Independent Review Panel, which is to safeguard the health and wellness needs of the OPP workforce by addressing shortages in the workplace. These new frontline officers will fill vacancies where the need is greatest, in regions that are short-staffed. This will provide much needed support to our existing complement of officers and ensure public safety always comes first. This new initiative also builds on our recent investment of $2.6 million to hire new psychologists and other mental health workers to support OPP personnel. It is a comprehensive approach designed to build care for the men and women who protect our communities. As the Minister responsible for Ontario's emergency response, I can tell you how heartening it has been to see Ontarians come together to keep each other safe as our province gradually reopens and our economy restarts. Our police have been there at every step of the way, standing shoulder to shoulder with community members and always ready to offer a helping hand. I want to thank the OPP and all of Ontario's police services for the tremendous contributions you are making during these difficult times, each and every day, to protect and keep us safe. You are leaders in your community, and our government is determined to continue providing you with the supports, resources, and tools you need to serve and protect Ontarians. Thank you. I would now like to invite Mayor Steve Clark to the podium. Well, thank you and welcome one and all to the Sunshine City. Sometimes it's uh, not just a metaphor, as you, can, as you can well see. And it is my pleasure uh, as Mayor of Aurelia to be standing here at the general headquarters of the Ontario Provincial Police. And the OPP and the City of Aurelia have a very special relationship indeed. Our local detachment, which serves Aurelia and our surrounding areas, is the largest in Ontario and soon to have their new facilities open. Central Region Headquarters is located here just uh, on the other block. And as we all know by being here today, OPP is also the home, uh, sorry, this really is also the home to the OPP General Headquarters. Truly a relationship with the OPP unlike that of any other municipality in Ontario. Members of the OPP are a valuable part of our community. They are our coaches, our volunteers, and a significant driver of our local economy. And I'm sure that we would all agree that theirs is a tough job indeed, often interacting with people in very difficult situations who are not experiencing their best days. And I know from conversations with our local detachment commander that issues related to COVID, the COVID pandemic, have exacerbated the negative aspects of many of those experiences. These types of interactions can take a toll, certainly physically, but also a significant mental toll. And that is to me, why this announcement is particularly important as part of this investment is earmarked for the mental health issues. And as Mayor of Aurelia, and because of our special relationship, I am fortunate enough to attend OPP graduations when the new recruits at the end of their training are welcomed formally into the OPP family. Although I will add COVID has put the brakes on some of those graduations recently. And I must say I've been impressed by how Commissioner Karik has openly addressed mental health head on at these graduation events. And now to have that recognition by leadership turn into a tangible investment by Premier Ford and the province is quite commendable. It is vital that we keep our frontline officers physically and mentally well, and this investment should go a long way to doing just that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Karik, Premier Ford, and Minister Jones. We know that across Ontario, the Ontario Provincial Police 
play a tremendous role in supporting our communities. Whether it's keeping local regions safe, helping victims of domestic violence, or tackling large province-wide crimes like human trafficking, we depend on them. With today's announcement, we are taking steps to ensure that our frontline officers have the support they need to continue to help build healthier and safer communities. I was able to speak about our announcement on the Proceeds of Crime grant recently, which has officers working with local communities on their needs. With the addition of these officers and the expanded training they are getting, I am confident that our neighbourhoods will be safer. As Minister of Children and Women's Issues, I have seen how domestic violence, human trafficking and sexual violence are impacting Ontarians and have heard just how important frontline officers are for supporting victims. Alongside our provincial police, we are working to help those trapped in the nightmare of sex trafficking to know that their community is working together to set them free. Most of us can't imagine these crimes occurring in our backyards. I can tell you that these crimes do not discriminate. Your neighbourhood is not immune. And we could not fight these crimes without the dedication, bravery and compassion of our frontline officers. Supporting the safety of our communities and of those on the front lines is and will always be a top priority for this government. Thank you again for all you are doing and thank you for making a difference. Please. First question, please. Your first question comes from Randy Rath with CHCH TV. Please go ahead. How you doing, Randy? Yeah, hi, Premier. Um, I actually have a question today for the OPP Commissioner. Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner, um, there's a situation in Caledonia where there have been um, blockades of roadways, um, the occupation of a housing development. The mayor and the council have released a statement calling on the OPP to enforce court orders that order demonstrators off the streets and to cease uh, occupying the housing development. Why hasn't the OPP enforced those court orders? Well, the OPP work under a court endorsed fame framework for police preparedness for response to indigenous incidents. And we are working within the parameters of the injunction. Our primary responsibility is to preserve peace and maintain public safety. And that involves having negotiations, mediation and ongoing dialogue to find sustainable solutions. We will continue to work within that framework and we will continue to take direction from the injunctions that are in place to fulfill our legal responsibilities. Thank you. Follow up. Um, Premier, the other day I asked you about this and you said that um, essentially it was completely unlawful what was going on and mm -hmm. that uh, you called on the demonstrators to, to, to cease what they're doing. Yeah. Um, do you find the OPP commissioner's uh, response acceptable to this? And um, you know, are you satisfied that everything's being done that could be done, that can be done to stop the situation down there? Well, I have all the confidence in the world and the commissioner and all the OPP. Matter of fact, I have confidence in all the police officers across Ontario. Uh, I want to make it very clear. I don't direct the police. I have uh, the confidence that uh, the commissioner will follow the injunctions that have been put forward by the courts. But what I was saying, I have zero tolerance for, for anyone throwing rocks at our OPP, throwing outhouses over the bridge. I had a, a good conversation in person with Chief Hill. I had him down to Queen's Park. He fully uh, understands and agrees. Uh, there, there's, it's always better to discuss these things, work them out, uh, make sure there is no violence, and we can move forward because it doesn't benefit anyone. It doesn't uh, benefit Six Nations. It doesn't benefit the Indigenous community as, as a whole. And uh, it's better to sit down, talk about it, and work things out. And uh, that's what we plan on doing. It's uh, very, very important. We, we go down that avenue and continue with dialogue. Um, that, that's that's how I feel, but I have zero tolerance, and I don't care who you are. You start attacking our police, I'll come out swinging. Simple as that. Next question. Your next question comes from Sean Jeffords with the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi, Sean. Good afternoon, Premier. Uh, wanted to ask you a couple of questions about schools again today. Sure. 
Um, earlier this morning, uh, MPP Hunter wrote Minister Elliott and asked for proactive COVID testing in schools located in virus hotspots around the province. I'm wondering if the province has any plans to conduct that kind of testing. And if not, what is we the do. government's plan regarding COVID testing in schools? Yeah, we do, we do have a, a plan for, for testing, proactive testing uh, right across the, the board. We have a well-oiled machine with Dr. Heyer and uh, the public health. We've been getting probably about 25,000, upwards to 30,000 tests every single day. And uh, I've made it very clear to all ministers on our cabinet, nothing is more important right now than making sure we have a safe environment for the kids going back to school. And I've always said we have the safest, most cautious uh, approach in the entire country. We have 500 nurses that we're hiring to go into these hot spots and uh, do the testing as, as well. We have uh, our health team on full alert. So we're doing a lot of things that no other province is doing in the entire country. They're taking our lead on thing, things, but it's not, I, I wanna emphasize this, as much as we put the plan forward, it's not the Doug Ford plan, the Stephen Lecce plan. It's a plan uh, put together through the advice of our, some of the best doctors in the country on our health table and our chief medical officer, along with uh, uh, sick kids and other, other uh, hospitals, be it UHN or CHEO in uh, Ottawa. Follow up. On the, uh, the testing resources specifically, I'm wondering if you intend to um, access any of the resources that you set aside in your latest uh, fiscal statement, uh, the reserves for health care when it comes to ensuring that testing is available, specifically if there's a demand for it as school starts, if parents begin to take their children into the assessment centers and we see a spike. Yeah, well, we're ready. We're, we're ready for those spikes and we're prepared. We have, a, again, a well-oiled machine. Uh, we've learned a lot, all of us, as a province, as a people, uh, right across this province. You look back in June, we had over 400 cases, and now, uh, to the exception of maybe a couple days, we're, we're, under, we're under 100 cases, and I give all the credit to the frontline healthcare workers and, and the people of Ontario that followed the protocols and guidelines from the chief medical officer, and uh, they deserve all the credit in the world. We're, we're doing well, but we can't take our eye off the ball for a second. Next question. Your next question comes from Lucas Meyer with News Talk 1010. Please go ahead. Hi, Lucas. Thank you very much. Uh, sort of on education as well, a Premier, to start. We spoke to the Ontario School Bus Association today because of this ongoing issue of a dri driver recruitment shortage, uh, even more concerning this year. And he mentioned that one of the issues is a backlog of licensing uh, to get drivers to go ahead. Is there a way? to fast track this process to make sure there are enough drivers in September. And like work is being done with the city to find extra space for classrooms, would the government consider reaching out to the TTC, Go Transit to see if drivers there could assist in transportation needs because volume is low right now? Well, Lucas, I think that's a great idea, but uh, right now, as long as we can move forward and expedite the, the protests, and I'm not protests, the, uh, the process, I should say, and uh, I'll talk to the minister about it because it's absolutely critical. We're putting $40 million more into making sure that we're uh, cleaning the buses. We've increased spending on uh, buses uh, to a billion dollars. When they first told me a billion dollars, I was kind of uh, was taken aback. I'm thinking a billion, but that's what we're doing. We're putting a billion dollars, making sure the kids get from uh, their home to school in the safest manner as possible. But I, I don't believe we, we should sit back. We need to expedite the process. So. I'll jump on that, Lucas, and we'll have an answer for you by the end of the day. Follow up. Thank you. Uh, Premier, on an un unrelated education question, back in April, uh, the government changed its construction time rules, uh, 24 hours for essential infrastructure, but also extended hours for things like condos, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, there's a rather comical, but nonetheless, a serious video of a Torontonian kind of frustrated about this, uh, with how late it's going and how it's really out of the city's hands. I'm wondering, since these changes were made in April, and we will have more people getting back to work in September, um, do you think it may be time to, to relook at those construction rules in terms of those specific time windows? Yeah, I heard about the video, and I, I, you know, my heart goes out to this guy. He's, he's hearing the banging, and and uh, you know, to late hours at night. I, I fully appreciate that, and I, 
I, uh, I don't disagree with them, but the scenario we're facing right now, we have to get people into homes. The number one priority is to put a roof over someone's head, and we had a, a, a tremendous backlog through COVID, so we put that order uh, forward, and, and hopefully when we get caught up, we'll take that order back. But I, I have to make sure that we protect our construction workers too. Uh, part of that was to make sure the construction companies and the, and the workers are able to separate their their start times and so we don't have so many workers all at once. So they're splitting the shifts up, uh, one during the day, one in the, the afternoons to the evenings. So we'll do everything we can. I hear them loud and clear, but we have to make sure the priority is to get uh, roofs over people's heads there. Next question. Your next question comes from Robert Benzie with the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Hi, Robert. Hi, Premier. I just I was wanting to ask you about um, your relationship with the federal government these days. I mean, it, it strikes me that earlier this week, uh, Mr. Trudeau announced uh, the new cabinet, and you were one of the leading voices on uh, Chrissy Freeland being uh, this new finance minister and how this is a, a good thing for the country. And I was just it struck me that your relationship with the federal liberals has certainly changed a lot than this time last year when they were political kind of foes of yours. I just wanted if you could speak to that and what, why you think that's happened and, and, and how is it good or bad or different sure. for the rest of us? Well, I think it's good. When I was uh, messaging Christia, that was last night, night before, I told her, I said, Christia, you and I are blazing a new trail that this country's never seen before. And I think it's a good trail we, we blaze because uh, when I'm out on the street, so many people say that's great that, that the municipalities and the province and the federal government are all working together. Uh, when we're going through this pandemic, it's critical that we're all pulling in the same direction. Will we agree on everything? No, we won't agree on everything, but there's so many more things we can agree on and work together. And uh, I, I, I could give you 10 pages of all the times Christy and I have talking, uh, talked late at night and saying, hey, let's get this done. And we're able to move things forward and cut down on all the red tape and all the bureaucracy to uh, make sure that Canadians are safe, Ontarians are safe, moving through this pandemic. So I consider Christy a good friend and uh, she'll always be a, a good friend. I forget about this uh, green, orange, red, blue parties. I, you know, I just, I've, I've, I've never believed in that. And I said yesterday, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm proud to be the leader of the PC party, but I can assure you our family doesn't get elected by just PC people. We get elected by uh, traditional liberals, traditional NDPers, and I'm sure the odd uh, green are there too. So I just, I'm out there helping the people and that's the way it should be. Put the political, uh, all that political nonsense behind us. We get more things done uh, a lot quicker. Follow up. And on a subject related to this announcement, um, some teachers are on social media saying, why aren't you hiring more teachers? You're hiring 200 more police officers. Uh, mm -hmm. We're in a pandemic. We certainly are going to probably need more teachers since there'll be fewer kids in classrooms. Why not hire more teachers, or is there a plan to hire more teachers uh, as we, you know, look to the back to school plan next month? Well, Rob, every, every uh, board is responsible to hire their teachers. We put money forward. Not only did we put 30 million forward, and I, I, first of all, let me go back. I'm not. I, I don't like the idea of comparing apples and oranges. First of all, two two separate uh, groups. But in saying that, if they do want to compare it, we're we're giving teachers uh, 30 million right off the hop. Uh, to hire more teachers. And then on top of that, we have the reserves. Uh, Toronto alone has over $100 million of reserves to hire more teachers. That's a, that's a thousand uh, more teachers if they spend $60 million, or a little over a thousand. So the, the reserves are there for the rainy day fund. And no, I haven't seen a storm like this in, in quite some time in my lifetime. So let's use the reserves and hire more teachers. And, and uh, you know, we, we all work together. We're gonna get through this. Uh, put all this, uh, the teachers unions have to put all this political nonsense behind them. I'm, I'm serious. Like, just put it behind you guys. Let's work together. I want to work with you. And uh, let's move forward and get the kids back in the classroom as safe as possible. As I've always said, Rob, everyone, every single person in this country has been working together. Uh, and we need to continue working together. And we've been listening as well. So let's get the job done and uh, work together. And I, I, I got a, I got a quote. Uh, Sean Monteith from Hastings uh, Prince Edward District School Board. So he's the director out there, Rob. And what a positive message. I'm, I'm not going to read out his message, but you should go online and hear, hear his message. You want to talk about leadership? 
and I encourage uh, because we have some great directors, but I, I need all the directors to take the same approach as Sean has, is about basically in less words is, folks, we, we understand the concern and I understand the concern about the parents and the anxiety, but he has this one. They're ready to teach. They're ready to teach safely. They're ready to protect the, the kids and the, and the, uh, and the teachers. So let's move, move forward and, and work together and we'll, we'll get through this. And the, the thing is, go back to the beginning of the pandemic. Look at what the grocery store clerks that were dealing with hundreds of people at the peak, at the peak of this pandemic, they were sitting there checking hundreds of people out. Look at the truck drivers. Look at our great police officers, firefighters, EMS. Uh, like everyone stepped up. Every single person in this country has stepped up uh, for the call of duty per se. And you know now I'm asking the, the teachers union. Now it's your turn, step up. I love our teachers. I've said that over and over again. We have some of the greatest teachers in the country. The teachers union have to come to the, the table here and uh, work with us. That's all I'm asking. Okay, last question. Your final question comes from Nathan Taylor with Aurelia Matters. Please go ahead. Hi, Nathan. Hi, Premier. Welcome back to Aurelia. Oh, beautiful here. Uh, uh, I just had a question around the timing of today's uh, announcement. Is Did the pandemic have anything to do with it, or was there something that prompted um, this, uh, this funding announcement right now? Well, I'm going to pass it over to the Solicitor General, and she'll she'll be able to answer that. Thank you. So there were many factors that um, drove this decision. Part of it was, frankly, the OPP internal review of staffing. Uh, part of it was the uh, feedback that we received from members of the service and retiring members. We needed to start to react and respond to some of the mental health concerns that we've been hearing from the OPPA, as well as uh, incoming uh, Commissioner Creek. And uh, so today's announcement was the culmination of many of those decisions. And uh, while the uh, pandemic delayed the announcement somewhat, it certainly didn't delay the planning and the preparation for those 200 new officers. Thank you. Follow up. Uh, yeah, just to, can you give me an example of some of the areas, uh, I guess this might be a question for the Solicitor General as well, I don't know, um, but some of the areas where you think these officers will be uh, place there. Are, I know you said some underserviced regions, but can you give me some specifics of some areas where they might be? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the operational decision about where the 200 officers will be placed will obviously be in the hands of uh, Commissioner Creek and his team, but it is clear that there are certain parts of the province, um, many in northern Ontario, as you can imagine, that have had uh, chronic understaffing, and so we want to make sure that we have the uh, resources and the officers on the ground in place in those communities. But in terms of specific uh, detachments, uh, those decisions will uh, be made by Commissioner Creek and his team. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. The real champion.